Pastor Steve of that church. And we're here today talking about Acts chapter 10. Now, as we're getting into this, realize we're looking at it from a special viewpoint. But before we get into that, let's look at... <laughs> Let's start off the way we should. Let's pray. All right. Ready? Here we go. So, Father God, it's you that we want to hear from. More than, more than anything, we want you. We definitely all need you, but we want you. We want you to show up. We want to sp you to speak through me today. Speak to our hearts as you're always speaking to our hearts, confirming those things that you've been speaking to us about. We, we thank you that all those that will ever hear, they're hearing you through our voice as well as inside of them and you're confirming those thoughts you've already been speaking to them about. Help them to see your perfect will, your perfect word, your, your, your ways, who you are. Help them to see you clearer and clearer from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we are, and we're, we're jumping into chapter 10 of Acts, and we're, we're seeing some new things here. Before we get into that, God was talking to me a lot more or about several things out of Acts chapter 9. And we're gonna we're gonna address a couple of those right here, and and it bears that some of this is is for today. Actually, we're we're gonna jump into here how how Cornelius was talking, because we'll we'll he's telling me we're gonna pick it up uh, as we go along here. So I want you to see that. We're going to go back to Acts chapter 9, and in verse 31 it says, So the church throughout the whole Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was edified. Uh, and then it comes down and says, And walking in the respect and reverential fear of the Lord and in consolation and exhortation of the Holy Spirit continued to increase and was multiplied. Now, as, as we see these things taking place, we, we look back at chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 1, is where they're all scattered, right? And Saul was uh, consenting to Stephen's death and was pleased and entirely approving on that day a great and severe persecution broke out against the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except uh, except the apostles, right? And I want to jump forward to to Acts eleven nineteen. It says, "Meanwhile, those who were scattered." So we're still talking about the same scattering, because of the persecution that arose in connection with Stephen, had traveled as far as. Uh, Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch without delivering the message without delivering the message concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God to anyone except the Jews. Do you see they they were doing it they weren't they were not giving it to anybody except the Jews. They weren't talking to anybody except the Jews. And here, as this is pertinent, they were supposed to. They were supposed to um, go and preach in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the outermost parts of the world, which they were thinking, is that just all the Jews? The Jews were scattered at one point, right? several points, right? As we look at this today, realize that that's one of them that God's going to bring out of that last chapter, but there's, there's more there. And we'll see how God brings it out. 
So we're looking at um, now living in Caesarea. Now living in Caesarea. Did he move? <laughs> so as, as we look at these things, we want to realize why it says certain things. But here we're talking about Cornelius, and he's a centurion, and he's of the Italian regiment. He, uh, he's a captain. Now, who was in charge of Jesus' crucifixion, right? Uh, was it him? Was it, was it this man? There, there's different th ideas out there about that it was, but here, let's, let's move on from that. I want you to see the heart of this man. We're looking at Cornelius's heart. That's the descriptive, descriptive words that they're given to us. And it says, a devout man who rever reverented God, had reverential fear, right? And treated him with reverential uh, obedience. Now, when we talk about obedience, he, he's a Gentile. How is it that did, did he connect himself to the Jews? And, and it would seem as that's what is, is, is being looked at, as did his whole household. Now, when we talk about this one man was devout, this one man was was being reverential toward God, but it says, as did his whole household. When a man is in charge of his household and his whole household is following after God, looking to God, being this way toward God, it, it, it shows something about the man. And here, he gave much alms to the people and prayed continually to God. Now, Praying continually, did he ever leave his prayer closet? This means he was continual. He was consistent. He, he saw it as something that needed to be done, and he needed to catch up, maybe, right? As, as we see these things, we see this... this um, it says here an angel shows up, but later on in verse 30 it says... Uh, a man or or angel was it a man or an angel so we we see it out of cornelius's mouth a second time and that a man so so this angel looked like a man that that's the way we're going to take it and why go why not go yourself so what i what i what i saw this morning was um he uh, gazing intently at him this is Cornelius gazing intently at this bright figure. This man uh, became, uh, he became frightened, said, What is it, Lord? He's reverential. You see that? Of someone he knows as spectacular, somebody know, he knows is from <laughs> uh, a spiritual sense here that this is more than just a man. And the, and the angel said to him, your prayers, your prayers, your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God. Now, this is something that we, we want to look at because he's saying prayers and gifts are coming up as a memorial before God. And here, and have been remembered by him. That's that memorial idea. As, as God is remembering, God, whenever you see God and remember, you're talking about covenant. You're talking about something that God has said he's going to do, and he's remembering what he said he's going to do, and he's opening up uh, a, a, a pathway to this gentleman to get him something. And, and listen to what it, what it is. Now, send. Why, why is it now send? Now, send men to Joppa and have them call far and invite here a sin, certain Simon whose surname is Peter. Why not go yourself? 
Why, why is this, this man sending, he's being told to send somebody. He, he, he sees that a, a man in the military can receive messages from his higher ranking officers or his higher ranking generals uh, through privates, through, through somebody else, but who is he receiving it from? If you look back at it, it says he, he called this, this angel Lord. What is it, Lord? And here he's, he's gazing intently at this angel and he asks, what is it? What, what is it? What are you here to tell me? As, as we see that, we, we see that this angel is realizing who he is. Wait, it's God realizes who you are. Because God sent the angel to give him a message as a higher ranking officer would send maybe a private to somebody to tell them the next step, what they're supposed to do. And here, now send men to Joppa. Now, why doesn't he go himself? Because he's of that, that training already by the military that he is a, a ranking officer and he directs people to take care of tasks that can take care of that task. Now, in my situation, I, I would sometimes see myself as being well, I need to make sure this gets taken care of right, so I'm going to go and do this. But this angel knows this man, God knows this man, will send those that he trusts the most to go and carry out this mission. Go and get, get something done, right? He is lodging in Simon a Tanner, uh, with, the Simon, with Simon a Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. So this angel tells him exactly where Peter's at and describes how to find him. So as Cornelius calls two of his servants and a God-fearing soldier from among his own personal attendants. Now he's, he's selecting exact people that he trusts to go and carry this out, exactly the way he says to carry it out. That's what we are to be doing for our God. Do you see that? We are to carry out instructions that he gives us to carry out. And, and here, what is he going to do when he gets Peter in front of him? There, there's different things, and we'll look at that here in a few minutes. L look at verse 11. He saw the sky opened and something like a great sheet lowered by the four corners descending to the earth. Now this is Peter, went up on the rooftop. He's hungry and he's waiting for you know, lunch to be prepared. Or, yeah, it was noon. So it contained all uh, quadruple, uh, quad, <laughs> quadrupets and wild beasts and creeping things of the earth and birds of the air and there came a voice to him saying rise up peter kill and eat now why isn't peter being obedient i want you to see in as we're going through this that peter's been thinking about these things peter peter has been having the holy spirit dealing with him about all these things and as we see this you realize the Holy Spirit's dealing with you about things before you get somewhere that you need that information. You need the, the right understanding. You need to deal with something the correct way. As, as we look back at Peter, Peter heard the testimony of Barnabas. Peter was around Paul. And, and what did Peter hear from Paul? What did Peter hear from Barnabas? 
And here, we can go back and read that um, in uh, chapter 9, verse 16. For I will make clear to you to him how much he will be afflicted and must endure and suffer for my name's sake. That's what Paul, Saul, right? The same person. What brother Saul or Paul is hearing from God, right? He's getting this download. Remember, it was in verse 15. It says, but the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for this man is cho a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before whom? The Gentiles is first there. Kings is second there. And the descendants of Israel is third there. Now, this, I would say, is what Ananias told, told Saul, Paul, right? And as he did, he, he explained several things to him. And here, how did he get into know where the disciples were at? Because weren't they, they were staying behind closed doors. And here, um, Saul, Paul, goes and starts preaching and proclaiming and expounding, bringing forth more and more understanding of the scriptures. That, that's what it says here about him. But what I want you to see is Paul knew these things. And here, Barnabas was there with him. And here, Barnabas brings him before the apostles. And here, Peter hears these things about this Jewish man is, is selected by God to, to bear testimony before the Gentiles. Are the Gentiles even supposed to hear it? Because up to this time, remember we, we went back here to verse uh, chapter 11, verse 19, and it says up to this time, they hadn't shown this testimony to anyone or told the, about this to anyone except for Jews. But here we are in Peter, and Peter's being dealt with by the Holy Spirit. He's heard these things, and he's, he's contemplating, remembering some of the things that, that Jesus has, has said. What, what does G the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit reminds you of everything that Jesus has said, right? Isn't that what, what was said to the disciples, right? We, we know these things, and then we... It bears witness to go all the way back here to, to chapter 16 of John's Gospel, where in verse 8 it says, When the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict, convince the world, and bring demonstration to it about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment. Now, as we get into what Peter is going to be saying before these Gentiles, what is he saying? And, and this is a, a key point here. Um, let me just kind of walk down through several of these points. But Peter said, no, by no means, Lord. He's telling the Lord, no. For I have never eaten anything that is common and unhallowed or ceremonially unclean. Now that's a statement. For a Jewish man, he said he's been seeing to. This was a fisherman. <laughs> he was seeing to this, this, this uh, ceremonially um, seeing to that he doesn't ever eat anything wrong. And then it comes down and says, now Peter was still inwardly perplexed. So realize that. And they called out to inquire whether Simon who was surnamed Peter, was staying there. That was verse 18. 19, Peter was earnestly revolving the vision in his mind and meditating on it. Now, what what do you do with the Holy Spirit? Remember, I've, I've given testimony before. When when in work, in, in my construction business, I needed to know how to do something. And he would have me meditate on what I knew about it. 
putting in the toilet was the very first one. And here he walked me through it. He explained the components I was working with. So much so, he was explaining that the toilet really is just like glass. If you tighten the bolt down, it'll crack it. He explained these things to me in picture form, in a vision type form, the same way Peter's having this vision form come to him. And as we see these things, he's meditating on it, same as I was thinking upon what the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about. And as he's doing this, get up, the Holy Spirit says to him, get up and go below and accompany without any doubt or any discrimination or hesitation, for I have sent them. The Holy Spirit's saying things to him about the people he's going to go and, and go along with, go, go back. He's supposed to heed to what they're saying to him. Now, realize when the Holy Spirit says to you something about someone before you know they're there, before uh, you know anything about them, you take the Holy Spirit's witness about that. Because here, if, if you're to do something, He's going to give you witness about it beforehand. Now, in, in, in buying specific things, if you're praying and asking Him what to buy, He's, he's obliged to, he's, he's going to come and talk to you about what you should buy, what you should do. But if you just are going about your daily business and doing what you think should be done, and not consulting with the Father, not consulting with Jesus, right? Not consulting with the Holy Spirit. He's not going to give you direction. Now, whenever I was asking him about a specific day, I was, I was in training. I, he was showing me how these things worked. He, he was explaining more and more things to me, how I could be directed in ministry. When I was working uh, in construction, running a business. One Saturday, he, 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 he came to me in prayer while I was praying, and I thought, okay, you want me to talk to you about what I'm going to do today. All right, so I talked to him. All right, I need to get my hair cut. I need to go and help this gentleman, a friend of a friend, uh, cut a piece of tile and that I had equipment to, and I was able to do. And, and there was a couple other things I was supposed to do that day. And here, I was intending to go get my hair cut first. Because I was going through my, my schedule with the Lord. I was talking to Him about it. And He said, nope, I want you to go cut the tile first. And I thought, but I, I want to make sure I get my hair cut. But if you're telling me to do this first, I'm going to do that first. I'm going to follow you because you have a plan. You know what I need to do first and what I need to do last. Don't you, whenever you're just going to go and wait to get your hair cut, you want to get there first in the morning and then you're going to get right in. That's what I, my thought was. But here the Holy Spirit directed me to go cut this tile for a friend of a friend and I got it cut and, and told him, there, there you go. Uh, you know, he, he was happy with how it turned out, and and uh, he said, "Well, what do I owe you?" I said, "Nothing. I, I was just blessing you with it, brother." You know, and he's like, "But well, what do you mean? Uh, you, I got to pay you something." And I was like, "No, don't worry about it. No, no worries, man." And and here he wasn't an active Christian. I believe God was working on his heart because of this other friend, and here. I'm, I'm just trying to be loving toward him, doing what I think I'm supposed to do. And he says, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, now I'm going to go get my hair cut. And he said, oh, no, no, my wife will cut your hair. You just, you just stay here. I said, man, you better go ask your wife uh, and make sure that that's great. But you ask your wife first because 
I don't know about this. Uh, you know, you don't just go and say what your wife's going to do is what I'm thinking. And he ran inside and he, he said to his wife, hey, you're going to cut Steve's hair. I, I want you to cut Steve's hair. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I got my hair cut for free. God saw to me and got things done for me quicker than I could have gotten done that day because he lined them all up. And he was directing. He was directing the hearts of those people that I was coming around. Just as he says back here uh, that, that the Holy Spirit is going to, in John uh, 16, what is, he, what is the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to do a demonstration before them. Was that demonstration before them? I don't know. It sure could be. And here, uh, about sin, about righteousness, about judgment. Now, while I was there, I continued to talk about God like I normally would. Is that what God wanted me to do? Stay there and say the normal things I would normally say. Talking about God. God's doing this in my life. God, God told me to do this. God told me to do that. So as we go about our lives, realize the Holy Spirit is there to help you. If you allow Him to be a help to you. Now, I want you to see this help. As, as we come down, Peter, uh, Peter arrives in verse 25. Cornelius met him and falling down at his feet, made obstinance and paid worship reverence to him. Now, Cornelius, you don't see Cornelius falling down uh, on his face before the angel. But he falls down before Peter. Why? I, I like to ask those questions because it helps us to, to look at things. He is reverencing, honoring someone above himself. Above what, what is around him. He's a man that was told by God to send other people to do something. And now he's... All right, I, I, this, is, this is a way to give this example. Jesus gets back to Campernon and um, Jairus, the head of the temple, comes and falls down at Jesus' feet and implores him to, to come, lay your hands on my daughter and she shall live. And Peter, I'm, or Jesus doesn't say anything but goes with him. Why didn't Peter? Um, why didn't Jesus, at that point, say, "What are you falling at my feet for? It's God that you're supposed to worship." That man, as we saw in Matthew's gospel, Mark's gospel, Luke's gospel, we saw different things. We saw in Mark's gospel that's that's where that story is at, and you see Jairus giving his authority, giving his place of authority over his household, over his daughter, to Jesus. This man is, is giving Peter the authority in his household. He's bowing himself to a man. And, and I understand Peter's stance there. I'm, I'm a man. You, you don't worship me. He was taking it to the highest point. Why was Cornelius taking it to the highest point? Because God said something about Peter. God said something about this Simon, who surnamed Peter, send for him and honor him, is what I would take out of that. If God's telling me something about somebody else, send for this person. He, he would have been in prayer, and I, I believe he would have resolved in himself, when Peter comes, I'm going to honor him. That's what this man is doing by falling down. Humbling himself. 
under the mighty hand of God who said, send for this Peter. That's how I took it. And here, in this place, Peter doesn't take that, that honor. I would say he deflects it to God. And God takes that honor and says, all right, you're doing good, Cornelius. This is good. This is good, what you're doing. And here, Peter went in and found a large group of persons assembled. It sounds like a whole church. He, he called neighbors. He, he called anybody and everybody that was under his influence. Now, we talk about taking his anointing to your sphere of influence. And he calls this crowd together. I uh, found a large group of persons assembled, right? And here, I was looking at it as a whole church. He said to them, your, uh, you yourselves are aware how it is not lawful or permissible for a Jew to keep company with or to visit or even come near or to speak first to anyone of another nationality. Now, Peter's laying out the ground rules here because he's got other people with him. And here, he, he's, he's, he's making sure he's doing it right. It, he never rose up and ate anything that was wrong. Do you see that? He's, he's never done these wrong things. And here, if he messed up, I'm sure he repented and got things right. God, Jesus helped him get those things right reinstated him, right? Asked him three times, cleansed him with that, those three cleansing commands or calls to him. Do you love me, right? Now, as we look at this, but God has shown and taught me by words. When, when we're, we're looking at this, they're trying to get an idea across to us here but God has shown and taught me by words that I should not call any human being common or unclean or ceremonially unclean. Now, as we look at this part of it, we see that Cornelius it would be considered unclean to Peter. But... Peter, you know, the, the whole nation has been blessed by Cornelius, is the way it seems, and, and all these different things. Then it comes down to this, and it says, um, verse 29, Therefore, when I was sent far, I came without hesitation, because God dealt with him about words. What you think is unclean is not unclean. If I say it's clean, do you see that? He's saying, listen to me, Peter. What I show to you to be right to do, you do it. Without thinking, well, the world says, or the Jewish customs are. He's saying, look, you follow me. And Cornelius said, this is now the fourth day since about this time I was observing the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon of prayer in my lodging place. He didn't go to temple. He's praying in his house because he's probably not welcome at the temple. Do you see it? Suddenly a man, now here he says man, before it said angel, stood before me in dazzling apparel, and he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and hearkened to, and your donations to the poor have been known and preserved before God, so that he heeds and is about to help you. Now, he heeds and is about to help you, that's God moving in on your situation to move in help to you just like he helped me in my business every single day especially when i ask for it other times when 
I had asked for it and I'm not so much thinking about it anymore. But whenever I went to just do it by myself, he wasn't helping me. He was helping me by trying to get me off of doing it my own way, but get back on trusting him, putting my faith in him and his word. Why does it say word there? Because we are, Peter was looking into the word. Remember on the day of uh, Pentecost, the day before, they were spending all their time looking into the word, seeing what Jesus had revealed to him about himself and, and looking for the next steps. And here he's still doing it. They're looking into the word constantly to find out what to do, how this life is supposed to be looked like and, and to do everything that Jesus was saying for them to do. He's looking for the Holy Spirit to talk to him about these things. That's why the Holy Spirit talked to him. Okay, so as we see what Peter says that the Lord was talking to him about, it's more than the vision. He, he was already thinking about things that the Holy Spirit's dealing with him about, maybe even about what Paul, Saul, had said to him and Barnabas had said to him, what they had heard maybe from Ananias, sent to, to them, the, because they're communicating back and forth. They don't have telephones that they're calling. They're sending runners. They're, they're writing things down and sending it forward, maybe with Paul. Maybe they sent letters with Paul to the disciples, to the, to the, the apostles, so that they would understand what took place and be assured by Paul's mark, by his handwriting, by Ananias' handwriting. Do you, do you see how, how we, we can put these stories and these contents together and then see a better picture? But it comes down here and it says, and here in verse 33, So at once I sent for you, and you being a Jew have done a kind and courteous and handsome thing in coming. That's honoring him again. Do you see it? It's honoring God. Because he's the one that sent, told him to send for this Peter, right? And Peter opened his mouth and said, Most certainly and thoroughly, I now perceive and understand that God shows no partiality and is no respecter of persons. Now, we saw this in Jesus' life, that he was no respecter of persons. Right? And in Peter saying this, he's saying, I get it now. I get what Jesus was saying. I get what people were saying. I get what Paul was, Saul was saying, right? I get what Barnabas was saying. Because certain things were sticking out to him and replaying over and over inside of him as the Holy Spirit's reminding him of these things and saying, Pay attention to this. And then he's straightening all this out so that Peter won't, won't not go. You get it? But in every nation, he who venerates and has a reverential fear for God, treating him with worshipful obedience and living uprightly, is acceptable to him and sure of being received and welcomed by God. Do you see this? For and then it goes on in verse 36, it says, You know the contents of the message. What message? How Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good. That's the message. The message is Isaiah 61. The message in Luke 4. As as we see Jesus speaking spoke this message everywhere, that's the message. He's saying, you know the contents of this message, which he sent to Israel, announcing the good news, the gospel of peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. He's, he's expounding on the little bit they know 
and saying he's Lord of all. And then says the same message which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee after the baptism preached by John. Do you see it? This was preached everywhere. That's where we see that at. And then it comes down in verse 38 how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power, how he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. Do you see this? And God is with Peter and God is with Cornelius. Do you see this? God is working on both sides, just as we pray a lot of times. He's already working in your heart, talking to you about things, and then things that I start talking about as he starts speaking through me, confirm. They show that what you've been hearing on the inside is from God. That's what he's all the time doing with us, is confirming his word with signs following. That's a sign to you. Take that as a sign to you. Now, Cornelius is taking this as a sign to him. This is something we're supposed to heed to because God told me by an angel that I'm supposed to heed to what Peter says to me. And he he started calling all the people. I, I've thought about this myself. If I started calling people and said, some great minister is going to come tomorrow to my house, uh, be here, who would listen to me? He has a great crowd. He is an upright man. He, He is training his family properly. They love him and are heeding to what he says is needful. We need to work on that in our own culture, in our own lives. Who would honor us by showing up and being here? We've had honor taken out of our schools because we don't honor the flag in schools anymore. We don't honor the Bible anymore. We don't honor prayer anymore in schools. Honor was taken out. And here, you wonder why people, when... When the the military came back uh, from uh, Vietnam, why they were not honored. (laughs) All of those things, it started back in 1963 when one woman got prayer, the Bible, and (laughs) allegiance to the flag out of schools. That should have never happened. And we need to make it right. We need to repent. We need to take it forth from here and hold up to God and say, it was, it was our family. It was our parents that did this thing, Father God. We repent. We, we, we choose to, to make this right. We need your help to make this right. We, we need you in our schools. We need you honored and, and revered in our schools and everywhere we go. To keep on going on with this, we, we see that the devil is the one that's oppressing people with sicknesses. We see in, in all this that God was with Jesus if, if Jesus was God, which he was, I'm not saying he wasn't, but if he had all of his godness with him, which it says in the word that he left that and came down as a man, it, why would God need to be with him? And sure, you can look at that a whole bunch of different ways, but if you read what's, what's there and what's being said, we'll see how God sent Jesus as a man to bear all that a man 
would bear and to fix everything that man had done wrong to get it all back and right all right but god raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be manifest to be plainly seen by the disciples those that were chosen now would you see where the chosen series gets its name right and down in verse 42 it says and he charged us to preach preach to the people and bear solemn testimony that he is God's appointed and ordained judge of the living and the dead. Now, that's something Jesus told the disciples. That's the apostles. Do you see it? This is something new that comes out. We see that they're supposed to preach and teach and make disciples of the people and bear solemn testimony that God has appointed and ordained Jesus the judge of the living and the dead. Do you see that? Now, we, we, we see that the God of this world, Satan, had the power of life and death up to Jesus taking it from him. Now, it's in our words. It was always in our words. It was the devil messing with our words to get us to speak it. Why did it take, you know, think, consider why it took so long for Adam to physically die and all his descendants live long, long times. And then it, it kept on getting shorter and shorter and shorter. God shortened things there to a, and said, man's days are going to be 120 years after a, a, a bunch of time went by so as we come down and we see these different things in verse 43 to him all the prophets testify and bear witness of jesus do you see that that's where we see that in every prophet in every book of the bible jesus is proclaimed jesus is shown because that's what Jesus was telling them about. Walking along, going to Emmaus. You see that, right? And here, he opened their minds to these things. And this is what Peter is meditating on. Thinking about. And the Holy Spirit's bringing up certain things from what he walked with Jesus and heard him say. And these things are what was coming out. And then in verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all who were listening to the message. What is the Holy Spirit doing? Interrupting the service. No, he's not interrupting the service. He's, he's, he's working with the word that is coming forth from Peter's mouth. Working with and confirming the word. That's what he's doing in the hearts of these men and women that were present and the children that were present. They are hearing the good news, the gospel, the, this what Peter's giving testimony about. And they're believing it. Remember, what is the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to bring, he, he will convict and convince the world He's convicting and convincing these people of, of who Jesus really was because they had heard the message. They had heard this word that Jesus preached all over. And the, the disciples went and preached different places, right? As they were sent, right? And bring demonstration to it. The demonstration is the Holy Spirit fallen. Now, they hadn't heard about maybe the Holy Spirit fallen. Maybe they did. Maybe they were considering, wow, that's quite something. These disciples are able to receive this Holy Spirit. I wonder if we can. As, as we look at what the Holy Spirit's doing, He is convicting them, convincing them that what Peter's saying is the truth. He's working with the Word that Peter is bringing to them and telling them about what, what uh, 
how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth, who went, who with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power, who went about doing good. You see how this is what they're believing. This is what the people around us need to believe. This is what the Holy Spirit's going to work with and convict and convince people about as you are saying it. That's the part we need to get about the good news. All right. And then it comes down this and it says, I want to read, go back to the end of verse 43. It says, giving himself up to him, receiving forgiveness of sins through his name. Because people are receiving his name. What's in his name? Let me read that whole verse so you get it. To him all the prophets testify, bear witness, that everyone who believes in Jesus, who adheres to, trusts in, relies on Jesus, giving himself up to Jesus, receives forgiveness of sins through Jesus' name. It's that name that's above every name. And we need to realize what's in that name. And so keep on going down here with me in verse 45. These, these received, verse 45 says, the believers from among the circumcised, the Jews who came with Peter, were surprised and amazed when the free gift of the Holy Spirit had been bestowed and poured out largely even on the Gentiles. Now, Peter wasn't laying his hands on these Gentiles. That would have made him unclean by Jewish custom. But here, Peter's speaking the word to them, and they receive it by receiving the word about the anointed one who went about doing good, healing, putting the enemy out, right? The enemy of your souls, I'm talking about. So, then in verse 46, we see, For they heard them talking in unknown tongues. How did they know that the Holy Spirit was poured out? Because they heard them talking in tongues. If, if people aren't talking in tongues, are they filled with the Holy Spirit? This is how the Jewish people knew those that were of the circumcision group knew that these had received the gift because the free gift of the Holy Spirit had been bestowed and poured out largely even on the Gentiles. Whoa! For they heard them talking in unknown tongues, languages, and extolling and magnifying God. How did they hear him extolling and magnifying God if they're speaking in tongues? Because they're mixing English in there with it. Maybe they're mixing other languages that they know in there with it. Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking through them languages that only those disciples, those that came with Peter, the Jews that came with Peter, knew. Maybe it was in their Hebrew language. How were they speaking Hebrew when they didn't know Hebrew? How was they, they speaking language they didn't know? By tongues. By this tongues. Through the, the, that which the Holy Spirit was rising up in them. Showing them it was right. This is good. This is speaking the good news. Right? Can anyone forbid, this is what Peter says, or refuse water for baptizing these people? You mean they received the Holy Spirit before they got baptized? They received the Holy Spirit with speaking in evidence of speaking in tongues before they were born again? I believe they believed. They adhered to, trusted in, and were, were thinking upon these things. And all this that Peter's saying... They, they, they were having the Holy Spirit convicting, convincing, and they're hearing and it's being confirmed for them. And so they believe. All right. Did they make confession? All right. 
so there's there's things here did did they call out lord like paul did saul did right there's different things here we don't have it all figured out did they have it all figured out you see that they didn't have it all figured out thank god god has it all figured out and in verse 48, the last verse, and he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus. Not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. They, they, they just baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. Then they begged him to stay on there for some days. I believe he did. And taught them more and expounded more upon what Jesus had expounded and shown and taught them because that's making a disciple that's what they were doing making disciples they were helping these people get the basics down so that they could stay listen to the Holy Spirit have the ground workings for the Holy Spirit to speak to them and move forward with that's what is not being taught right now we are intending to we're we're moving toward teaching this you you have to hear stories you have to see people being moved by the Holy Spirit working with the Holy Spirit. You have to start to work with the Holy Spirit and look into Him to have these things, these thoughts. You see all this? These are good things, but you have to be the initiator of. You have to initiate. Start it with the Holy Spirit. Initiate, right? So, in that teaching more, God is always teaching us more, causing us to come up, to work with Him, and, and be mature. All right, so always remember that God loves you, and that we here at that church love you, and that Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take His anointing to your worlds. Bye-bye.